Hello from Canberra. Hello everyone. We have previously done a video on Canberra, which has some great ideas for getting around Canberra, but given that the pandemic has had most of us wanting to head to more outdoor kind of activities, we decided we'd do a bit of a more outdoorsy Canberra video. Mmm, on a nice overcast day. <laughs> well yes, the weather has stayed unseasonably cool until late November in Canberra, so mm. it's meant that I don't want to hole up indoors yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's really good. So, our first stop today is a little bit of a forest walk on the way to a historic site. Bit so, of a cheery number today. Not really. More on that in a second. But first we've got a bit of a path ahead of us and it's through a lovely pine forest. So mm. let's get walking. Actually, butterflies everywhere on this path. It's quite pretty watching them all fly around and a few dragonflies. Yeah, I just read an article about the monarch butterflies. They looked like the picture in my article. Maybe they are. <laughs> you know when you're walking along pretending that everything's all right, but deep down inside you know that your sock is falling down in your shoe. There's a political thriller show based on Canberra and set in Canberra that is on Netflix. It's called Secret City, I think. We watched it a while ago. It was really good. And one of the areas that they filmed in looked a lot like this. I don't know if it's exactly this area, but I'm pretty sure it's exactly this forest. So yeah, if you want to see a Canberra-based show, look up Secret City. the end of the track. We mentioned at the start that this isn't the most cheery of destinations. That's because it's the site of a plane crash back in 1940 that actually killed 10 people, including three cabinet ministers and one chief of staff. This was during the time of World War II when a lot of these ministers were actually pretty vital in organising the war efforts in Australia. So it was a bit of a blow. The plane crash actually had nothing to do with the war. It was just that the engine stalled on landing when it was too low to recover. Very sad occasion. And so they've put this memorial in the middle of the forest here at the site where it happened so that people could come and pay their respects going into the future. Another fun fact about this place is it's known as one of the most haunted places in Canberra. So if you come at night there are legends of people seeing the burning aircraft pilot ghost and just ghosts running across the trail in front of them. <gasps> we didn't come at night because we were too scared. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually our first time here, so we thought we'd better get the lay of the land in the daytime before we scare ourselves silly. <laughs> At the time, the crash brought to light how much travel ministers were having to do between Sydney and Canberra and Melbourne and started the conversation about maybe having a centralised spot so that there was less travelling around. The RAF base here in Canberra is actually named after one of the men who died in this plane crash. It's the Fairbairn RAF base. And the trees that are surrounding this memorial here uh, eucalypt trees, not pine like the rest of the forest, and it's thought that these trees are actually the last remaining trees from the original forest that was here. And this memorial was erected in 1960 for the 20th anniversary. I believe Robert Menzies, who was the Prime Minister at the time of the crash, helped open this one. And the plaque back there was added in 2003. A tiny bit further up the road towards Canberra from the Air Disaster Memorial is the Canberra Redwood Forest. This is the largest and only mature plantation of redwoods in Australia that the sign that was telling us about it knows about. Mm. <laughs> and we've never been in here. We know it was affected by the fires a couple of years ago. There's probably some dead ones in here, unfortunately, but Jesse loves a good tree, especially yeah. redwood. There's two, two species. One is the coastal redwood and the other has the word gigantium in it. So I'm looking forward. <laughs> They've been growing for over a hundred years years now. Hopefully there are some Gigantosaurus rexes in here. <laughs> We've had a bit of rain lately so there's um, a pop-up lake in the Redwood Forest. One year we have the fires which has torn through this area and now we've got the lake. The floods and the fires, that's all we have these days. <laughs> It's like a set for a, you know, Wicked Witch of the West movie. Look at that, you could not design that. Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah. It's like something the big bad wolf would live in. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Look at it. It's just like someone's built the thing. It goes right in. Are you 
fun in these trees. Oh, you know, a little burnt out. But the rain's definitely giving them some new shoots. I think we drive past this place twice a day most days and never been in. Don't know why. It's weird how they all just go to a spike like they're Voldemort's wand or something. I recommend if you're coming after a lot of rain to wear some gumboots or at least shoes that don't let the water in because I did not <laughs> and the path isn't exactly clearly marked and there's a lot of puddles so maybe plan ahead better than I did. We did find the giant sequoia at the end. He's um, dead and lying down. It did say dead giant sequoia on the sign so I don't know why we're surprised by that. Pretty big circumference. It was about as tall as Jesse lying down at the bottom of the trunk. We find something of size. We did. Unfortunately, because of the fires, a lot of the back half of the forest here has been burnt out. So if you want to save yourself a longer walk, since we just had one at the air disaster site, maybe just stick to the front half, have a wander around here, see the rabbits racing about. We haven't managed to catch them on film because they're so fast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, I think it's time to head to the middle of town and ride some bikes. Woo! Lake Burley Griffin which is an ideal biking place because a lot of it is pretty flat so if you don't like hills it's great but we're actually gonna go on the side that I've never been on today there are two bridges in the middle of one big loop that goes around so you can kind of choose your adventure about how long you want to cycle for we've never done the side that we're going to do today because I was too scared of the hills but now I've got an e-bike so I'm not scared anymore let's go <laughs> I can see Telstra Tower just there. We've come round past the museum and now we're coming around the Telstra Tower side. Oh man, look at those views. You never see this side of the lake. Mm. Governor General's house is somewhere there. I think we'll probably ride past it. Sixteen kilometers. What have we got ourselves into? We've come to a little lookout area on the right here, which has three things that you can see that are important to Canberra's history. The first is that Lake Burley Griffin used to be part of the Malonglo River and it was dammed off to make the lake. The second is you can see the chimney stack from the old brickworks behind me, which was very important in the early building of Canberra because they needed bricks to build the houses, right? And the third is Government House, which you can see over to the side, which is where the Governor General lives. What do you reckon? Bit of water. That is Scrivener Dam on the Malonglo River. Usually they have three open when it's, well, probably more, four open when it gets really rainy. But it's now two days after the rain, I suppose. And across the way there is the Arboretum the Tree Museum. They're slowly growing, slowly getting there. One day it will be incredible. And that is Canberra Zoo, just over there. We can see the Jamala Wildlife Retreat. There's the accommodation for where you can stay with the giraffes and the lions and tigers and bears. And we swear we heard an animal a second yeah, ago. We could just hear a very huge animal making a big beastly noise somewhere in the trees. Maybe it got out. Maybe it's heading our way. Shoot! <laughs> this is a fun little bridge. Jesse loves going for a run on his bike. the west 
Western Loop. So we did the Western Loop today, but the thing about the lake is there's the Western side, the Eastern side, and the middle. There's an on-lake cafe at the start of the Eastern side, so you can duck a little bit off the central and step into a cafe. Or if you go the Eastern side, there's the wetlands that you can explore, and it's a very short ride to Capital Brewing, which we mm -hmm. went to in our previous video. We'll leave the link to that one below. So you can get some more ideas for things to do in Canberra. Well, 16 Ks today. Yeah, we definitely did the long side of the lake. The mm. rest of it is about that again. If you did yeah. both of the other sections, the center and the eastern side. Also, if you didn't want to ride a bike, you can hire an electric scooter and go around the central part of the lake on that. And you can actually hire bikes, not electric bikes, just normal bikes to go around the lake as well. So you don't always have to bring your own. And after all that exercise, I highly recommend a picnic in Lennox Gardens. It's one of the favourite picnic spots of all of the camper locals because you can see out to Telstra Tower, you can see the boats going around on the water, you're in amongst all of these delicious trees so there's plenty of shade and um, after all that exercise you deserve it. We are not the first people to do this, everyone comes here because it is delightful. But there's a reason that people do things that are popular and that's because they're nice to do. <laughs> hey, that's a haiku. It is. <laughs> I don't know, it may be a haiku. <laughs> so we're going to sit here and watch the boats come past, hopefully. I hope they're all not going home. Please don't go home. A lot home. of them are going home. <laughs> it's getting late in the afternoon, but we've got our, our cheese spread here, some crackers and a couple of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> we actually saw that there's a, a brewery van over there. Jesse might check that out in a bit, see if mm. it's any good. Mm. See if they're actually serving the public. Maybe it's a private function. <laughs> yeah, it could be, it could be. <laughs> We have heaps more outdoor ideas for Canberra that we didn't get to today, so maybe there'll be a part two of this one in the future. Maybe on a nicer day because it's not the best day for swimming and that kind of thing today. I think we'll do it very soon, actually. If you'd like to see more videos from us, please subscribe, like this video, ring that notification bell so you know whenever we post something new, and we'll see you in the next one. See ya. How are you? Hello. How are you today? <laughs> air crash memorial. Air, the air crash memorial. The air crash disaster. The air disaster memorial. <laughs> it's the air disaster memorial. Oh, it looks like a goose with Yeah, so good. Okay. A bird, a bird, ED. Let's go get a yacht. <laughs> a yacht. <laughs> Soon as work dies down again, now that it's picked up again. <laughs>